Good morning, folks. CO2, methane, and water vapor now get to share the greenhouse gas stage with another in the form of oceanic iodine. A nation of extreme temperatures yesterday, negative 20 at the Grand Canyon. It was 50s in New Hampshire, 65 in Columbus, Ohio. By the way, it is barely 30 degrees now. Had a 5.5 rattle the Gulf of California yesterday. Another similar quake at the coast of Bolivia and Chile. Pollution in China. Beijing to be specific, 28 times the accepted safe level for humans. I have this image saved from a while ago. It shows the active buoys before some of the newest ones were added. But just look at how much yellow there is versus the red all over the map. Now we take a look at this morning. Nearly half the Alaskan buoys are turned off. The deactivated numbers in the Central Pacific are way up. We even see a few turned off in the Atlantic and near Europe. Use the pause button to compare if you need to. Cyclone Amang gets his name just northwest of Norel here. You can see them both on the Indian Ocean infrared satellite map. Amang is looking to head further west. Space weather, Bartol cosmic ray density climbing back up moderately but far from concern. Looking at the active regions, the decay in this monster group has fully set and as identified yesterday, the lone dangerous aspect here is in the center where an isolated bipolar group appears set to mutiny. The leading and trailing umbras are still magnetically connected but look beneath them. That central development is connected separately. When these things spread, despite the decay, I bet they got at least one more flare in their system. But forget what could be. We already have something on the way. NASA's endless spiral was initially updated after yesterday's news to show a tiny CME directly headed for Earth. On stereo A here, Earth off to the left, you can see clearly the eruption headed that way. On stereo B, it's harder to see, but Earth is off to the right and in the line of this ejection. I honestly can't tell you if it came from the M flare or some of the instability on the southwest quadrant, which was beautiful by the way. We also saw some eruptions on the southwest limb, bottom right. The Soho Lasco C3 shows a majority of the ejecta missing to that one side, so NASA re-updated their endless spiral this morning to show Earth getting clipped by the edge of that blast. NOAA's spiral is updated as well, and they confirm Earth impact. This is going to be minor, likely no damage, but we will we'll get to test our shields. Speaking of which, forget what's on the way. We have space weather impact now. Yellow, solar wind speed is pushing 600 kilometers per second, more than double what it was two days ago. The green temperature rises in kind, while the orange density falls with the speedier particles. This has coronal hole stream written all over it. We look three days ago to find a dark coronal hole directly facing Earth. But finding the source is only half the battle. Here on Earth, our magnetic shield is holding form. We are taking some growing inductions, but the rhea meter was off for hours and we lack the plasma penetration data. This is of concern because both the ACE and GOES show charged particle anomalies here, both protons and electrons. Our planet's energy appears to be in flux. And with even more space weather set to strike this week, and Venus set to heliocentrically oppose Jupiter, while Mercury is swinging in for a geocentric solar conjunction. Together, these make our first significant quake watch of 2013. Eyes open. No fear. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.